Okay, so if we're looking where um, the intervals are negative, it's the places where the y's are negative, which is here, right? But is it negative at, at 2? No, it's not negative at 2. It's actually just on the x-axis at 2, correct? So where is this graph negative? Its intervals where it's negative are just from negative infinity to negative 2, but not equal to, correct? So we could go x instead of this interval notation. If we wanted to do set notation, we'd say where x is less than 2, this graph is negative, correct? Now where is this graph positive? I get a whole bunch of people telling me when x is greater than negative 2. It's not true. Is it positive here at 3? Is it positive at 3 or is it just on like the flat zone? It's literally like ground level, right? Ground level, if you treat this like this is the ground level and this is all that's below the ground and this is all that's above the ground, that's actually on the ground, is it not? So it's neither positive nor negative, is it? So you can't just say when x is greater than negative 2 because that would mean this whole graph on the right of negative 2 is positive, but it's not at 3. So we actually have to split it up. So we have to say when um, between negative, oh, that's just awful. From negative 2 to 3, and then from 3 to positive infinity. Not inclusive of 3, because 3 is not positive, right? It's just on the ground. So how could you write that in set notation? Negative 2 is less than x is less than 3. But no equal signs, because at those, at those actual numbers, it's neither positive nor negative. And then this would be um, x is greater than We agree? But you don't say when it's equal to those x values because that's ground level. It's neither positive nor negative. It's just there. The other thing they'll ask us to do is to determine the equation of this graph. Is this graph an odd function or an even function? Odd because the arrows are in opposite directions. We agree? Does it have a positive leading coefficient or a negative leading coefficient? Positive because it's up on the right. We look at the right arm and it tells us if it's positive leading coefficient or negative. Okay. So we know we have an x-intercept at negative 2. So we know we have a factor at x plus 2. How many of them do we have there? How many x plus 2 factors? 3, because we have... <laughs> I just did this. That is not 3. 3! Yes, we have 3. That actually hurts. Okay, we have three. This is true. We agree. We have three. I just wanted to rhyme. Okay, so we have it cubed. Because that's how we know we have three. Yeah. Because it curves through it. It has a point of inflection, which we just found out from here. If there was only one, it would go straight through. It doesn't go straight through. So our options are two, three, or one. One goes straight through. It didn't. 2 bounces down, it didn't. 3 makes this little less shape. And then this one has how many? 2. At x minus 3 squared. We agree? Now what do I have to find? That front value the coefficient that's in front. Not leading coefficient because it's not in front of the largest exponent, but the value that's in front. Because this value that's in front changes, correct? Just because the x-intercepts are where they are doesn't mean this value is a 1. So we have to solve for it. So we go y equals a. How can we find that a value? And we did this in grade 11, too, with quadratics. Yeah. You pick a point. Now, on here, I'm going to be guessing a point, obviously, because it's not the well, most well-drawn thing, correct? But on the diploma, they're not going to be getting you to guess a point and hope that it's in the cross spot, right? That's kind of silly. So what they often do is they'll either tell you what the y-intercept is, and then indirectly you use that, or they'll bold a point on it, showing that it goes through cross-sections so you know that that point exists there. Um, we, the only point we can't use is the x-intercept. If we try and use the x-intercept and fill them in, they're going to cancel off a factor. It's a mess. You can't use an x-intercept to solve for a. But you can use any other coordinate. I'm going to use this one and pretend it was bolded. 
So it's at 1 and 1, 1, 10. Let me go up by 10. 1 and 1, 10. And I just pl plug them in for my x and my y and solve for my a. Yep. You could, but I don't know if it's for sure at 75 or if it's at 70. Like it's quite hard to see. So that one I wouldn't pick specifically just for this graph. These ones aren't the best of graphs. The diploma questions or my um, test questions will be much more clear as to where the points are. So 110 equals a 1 plus 2 cubed, 1 minus 3 squared. So this is 110 equals a 1 plus 2 is 3 cubed. And then this is negative 2 squared. They're all multiplied together. We're literally just doing the operation in the breath. And then you get 110 equals a. 3 cubed is 27. Negative 4 squared is 4. I literally just did math. I know your faces are making me not understand what I did, but I literally just did that. 1 plus 2 is 3. Put it cubed. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Put it squared. If you're on your phone, that might be why you're confused. All right. So I have 110 equals A. What's 27 times 4? 10. Yep. Divide by 108. Ooh, didn't mean to cross off the A. The A's still there. What does that reduce to? 55 over. Now that's not an equation, is it? So if you just give me this as the answer, you're not getting the mark. Yeah. I used one and one ten. Yeah. Yes, as long as it actually is accurate. Most of the points will be like in between values or weird things. So what they'll do is they'll bold a point on the actual graph or they'll give you like the y-intercept and tell it to you, then use that. So often they'll, you'll see on the entire graph there's one little bolded point. It's like screaming at you like, use me for the a value. But then some people don't solve for the a value. And they're like, why is this point bolded? I don't know. Silly bolded point. If they're bolded point, they're bolding it for a reason, not just to have a randomly silly bolded point on your graph. So that should be a hint. Be like, where do I need to use this silly bolded point? Somewhere. I swear. Okay. So we get y equals 55 over 54. So many people forget to solve for a. If you're like, that's going to be me, then you leave yourself a little side note and say, every time I determine a polynomial equation, I need to solve for the a value. And you know who you are. You know if you're someone who's going to forget it. You know if you're someone who's possibly going to forget it. So you're going to leave yourself a little side note and be like, mm, that's not good. Don't forget that. So do you understand if it makes a little S shape through it? It's to the 3. If it makes, or it could be to the 5 or 7 or 9, right? There could be 5 happening there. It could be like, if it was like 2, if it did this on the x-axis, there could technically be 4 because it would hit it once, try and bounce back up, bounce back down, bounce back up, and you see this thicker line here. And it would have 4. But they'll often ask for the minimum possible degree, which would force it to be a 2. Uh, if they said it's a degree 3 function, it would have to be 2, because it couldn't be 4. You can't have more x-intercepts than the degree. So if they said degree 3 function and this was drawn on one of the graphs, well, it would have to keep going, right? Like that. And this would have to be 2. It couldn't be 4, because that you can't have more x-intercepts than the degree. Well, then they'd have to specify. Or they'd give you one equation that had a 2 or a 4. No, there's no guessing and hoping for some mess. They give some sort of specification. If not, it could be an open-ended written response, and then it could allow you to pick four and someone else pick two, technically. Make an equation that way. It makes for real awful marking, but those open-ended ones are often harder because they're not specified enough. 
Okay, what happens if I give you a question like this, though? So I don't give you the graph, but I give you information. It's up there. So I have x-intercept at x equals 1 half and x equals 3 halves multiplicity 2. with a constant of 6. Determine the polynomial equation. So until now, we've had like x equals 2, and then that would be a factor of x minus 2. Or we had x equals 7, and that would be a factor of x minus 7. Or we had x equals negative 2, and that would be a factor of x plus 2, correct? When people see these, x equals a half, they'll tell me the factor is x minus a half. Have we ever seen something weird like that when we factored using synthetic division? x minus a half? No. But we did get answers that were a half. Did we not for when we solved? We got answers that were a half, but we never got factors that were x minus a half. So what was the actual factor when we got answers of x equals a half? How do we get our roots when we have factors? We set it equal to and solve, correct? Set equal to zero and solve. So can we not just try and get these back equal to zero? So we, if we have x equals a half, Instead of just minusing the half and making it be x minus a half equals zero, which isn't wrong, that answer will never be there. It's not wrong, it just won't match anything on the test because um, they do it as integrals. What did we do to get to the half? We divided by two, so how can we get it to go back? Multiply by two. So now I have 2x equals 1. Then what could I do? That would just undo what you did. Yes. So we get 2x minus 1 equals 0. So the factor is actually 2x minus 1, not x minus a half. If you're like, yeah, I'm so going to do that on the test. Side note, little star, star, star. Do not do that. Do not do x minus a half. Remember, I need to work my way backwards to get 2x minus 1. Yes, yes, yes. And then when you do this wrong on the test, I'm going to put a little sad face with tears and a big old puddle from all the tears that that sad face is crying because you write x minus a half. Oh, sad. Sad, sad, crying, sad face. Okay. There's only one there, so my factor will be y equals a, because I have to find that a no matter what kind I'm doing, 2x minus 1. And then I need to do x equals 3 halves. How do I work that one back? Multiply by 2, exactly the same as the other. 2x equals 3. Then what do I do? 2x minus 3 equals 0. So I write that one. And then people go and try and solve for a. What's wrong? Close. Oh, I thought I put a 3. I didn't. I put multiplicity 2. You're right. We square it. Absolutely. So correct. Thought I put a 3. Did not. So if it said multiplicity 3, we'd put a... 3. If it said multiplicity 5, we put a 5. Okay, what degree is this equation? Well, we could expand it out without doing the a, because we'll have to do the a in a second. I'm just expanding it out to show this to you. 2x minus 1. Then we have technically have two of these. We agree? How many x's do we have? 3. This is an x cubed. So it's actually a degree 3 graph. Most people will tell me degree 2 because they see two x's, but remember that one, there's two of them. We just compress them into one. Okay. Now, 
how, what the heck point do I have so I can solve for A? Yeah. Zero and six, zero and six Y. Yes, the constant is of this is just the y-intercept. So I have a point at 0, 6. So that's my x and my y. So I have 6 equals a, 2 times 0 minus 1, and then 2 times 0 minus 3 squared. And then we're going to get 6 equals a. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 1 is minus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 3 is negative 3, but it's all squared. So I get 6 equals a times negative 1 times 9. So 6 equals negative 9a. Divide by negative 9. And I get a equals negative 2 thirds. And I'm done. What do I do? Help me. What? No, it's a coordinate. You're just putting it in for the 6. And you wouldn't put it at the back because that's not the constant. The constant at the back is when you have it in the form of general form. When we expand this out, you'll see that you actually do have it as constant. What's up? y-intercept, just not an x-intercept. y-intercept is fair game. x-intercept, bad. Because yeah. x-intercepts will just literally, if you took an x-intercept, you'd fill it in here, and then this one would become a 0, let's say. Anything times 0 is 0. The a is gone. Everything's gone. We're not solving for a anymore. We just got, ugh. Yep. Because this one didn't say it has, it's just x equals a half. So that means you have one. Multiplicity 2, then both would have a 2. If this one was multiplicity 3 and that one's multiplicity 2, this one would have a 3, this one would have a 2. Yep. If it says nothing, it has multiplicity 1, which means you could technically put a 1 on there, but it just does nothing to you. Because when you expand it out, this is going to be an x times an x times an x, which is an x cubed. Okay. What's up? Absolutely. It allows you to graph it. So you could get y equals negative 2 thirds. But once you've solved it out, guys, it's pretty easy to determine what degree it is. You just type in your calculator at the very least and look at it, right? Because you'd have the actual equation. So we have 2x minus 1. And then we'd have 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3. I'm just leaving them expanded like this so I can prove a point. Okay? Now, when we can't determine the equation of an actual graph, when we did this way back here, we could check it and see if we were right. Could we not? We literally type this into our y equals, change our window to be the exact window of this. So we go from negative 40 to 120 in the y, and the x, I go negative 6 to 6. Now, why would I change my window to be exactly the same as that window? So it would look exactly the same. Because if you have a random window that's not the same as this window, you might be like, yeah, I think they're the same. I think they're the same scares me. I think they're the same could be wrong. Correct? If you make your window exactly the same and they look exactly the same, there's no I think anymore. There's a it is right, and I move on. Yeah? So I always make my window the same. Now, this one down here, how could I check this one? Type it into your calculator. Find your x-intercept. See if you have a multiplicity 2. See if you have 1. Check and see if you have a y-intercept of 0 and 6, right? If you have other information. Now, how can I find the constant to see if I'm correct? Well, what does a y-intercept mean? x is equal to 0. So if I plugged in 0, all of these front terms would go away, would they not? So the fastest way to find the y-intercept when you have it in this form, remember when it's in um, standard form and you have no brackets, the constant is your y-intercept, correct? So I could expand this whole thing out, collect like terms and get the constant, and I'd have it, which sounds terrible, just so you know. But if you just multiply this and this back number and this back number and this back number, you'll get your y-intercept 
which will get you your constant. But y? Because y intercept means x equals 0. So if I plug zeros in here, and 0 in here, and 0 in here, that would cancel, 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 and I'd just be multiplying these four numbers, correct? If I multiply those four numbers together, you get 6. If you don't believe me, multiply them together. You get 6. Okay? So that's how you would actually get the constant. So from this form, you can't just put a number at the back. You could just put a number at the back as constant if it was in no brackets standard form. Yeah. No, that's not what that question is asking. I know what you're asking. There's a question in your hand in, and it says that this is in the form y equals negative 1. They say, determine the equation. I'm going to tell you all because you're all going to do the same thing she's doing because every single other person in the other class does it, and they do it for years. They gave this diploma question, and I was like, oh, my kids are going to read this wrong because they used the value of a. So what they did is they went, it's in the form negative 1 over a, and then they said, uh, for example, this one, 2x minus, or they'll say in this form, ax minus b, not a, dx minus b, uh, cx minus t, who cares, to the 2. They'll say it's going to be in that form. They'll say that's what the final, in the end, it's going to look like that. That's what it means. In the end, it's going to look like that. Just solve it like you normally do, and in the end, it looks like that. But we'll say it's a 2 in this case. In your hand, and it's a 1. In this case, it would be a 2. Why would it be a 2? Because my answer is negative 2 over 3, 2x minus 1, 2x minus 3. They'll ask for the value of a. What's the value of a? It matches it. What is it? 3. So you're just going to solve your hand in just like normal, and you're going to get an a value of negative 1 over something. They just want what the something is. So you're not going to do like any crazy math dividing the a over the negative 1 and get some crazy, because that's what people do when they see that question. All they want is they want the equation of the, um, is it a statement or a graph? I can't remember. A statement? So they want the equation, it's a graph, they want the equation of the graph in this form. And they literally just want this bottom number. They don't want you to do any crazy math to get the bottom number. They just want you to solve for a, and your a value happens to be negative 1 over a number. It's just that they put the a on the bottom, so you're thinking that's a, because they used the variable a. Had they used d or p or m, you guys would have answered the question completely differently. Because the question is a graph, and they say, what's the actual form? y equals negative 1 over a, x minus 1 x plus p, b. So this is what they do. So then you guys all try and solve this out with this being like crazy a and subtracting it. Had they done this, what would you do? Because it's not an a, you would have just solved it out like normal, got your a value and wrote negative 1 over whatever the heck your a value is and you were good. But because they put an a value in here, you're like, the a value must be solved properly. And then you fill it all in and you bring the a value up with the y and you divide by negative, you guys do some crazy old math. All it literally wants you to do is determine the equation in this form and tell them what the heck this number is. Your a value is going to be negative 1 over something. Tell me what the something is. That's it. But because they put an A down here, it's like you guys see it as the actual A value. They just used an A variable. They could have, they should have used W or something because every teacher uses A. The moment I saw that A on the bottom, I was like, oh, I know what they're going to do. Why well, couldn't that have been a P or a Q or a T or a pig for all that matters? Why did it have to be an A? I was like, even if it was a smiling face, they'd have a better chance. But it was an A. So there's that. All they're asking for it in, in this form. And when they do that, they'll do that in numerous things, right? They'll often say in the form x plus a, in last year we did this, in factor, the, or grade 10, in the form x minus a, 2x plus c. What's the sum of a and c, right? They literally just want you to factor it. It's going to go in this form. Tell me what those two numbers are added, right? This one's just saying 
determine the polynomial, it's going to end up looking like this. Tell me what that number is below the A. They actually kind of hinted at what your A is. All right? Okay. So, you guys can finish 10 if you want. Um, C and D for extra practice. Not C and D. Bullet 3 and 4, because I only made you do bullet 1 and 2. And I'd like you to just start working on your hand in.